Hey guys, hope you are all having a great day. I wanted to make a video addressing one of the more bullish scenarios involving the future of AMC. For months, we have discussed to death the squeeze thesis, the ability for AMC to pay its debts and whether theaters have a place in the future. On my last video, I talked about why AMC is set to live through some difficult and tumultuous times in the near future, especially with its reverse split. I made my concerns and frustrations with the management team clear and open, and the input I received from most of you was great. Many agreed, many others did not but at least most explained their reasons why. I am thankful that the community we have built is made up of open-minded individuals who more or less can establish dialogue and agree to disagree while bringing fair points of discussion, something that is absent in most other channels and AMC-centric forums. Today's topic will be much less controversial, but much more complex and rich of opinions and perspectives. We will not talk about MOAS this time. Instead, we will discuss AMC's existential position, what its value proposition looks and whether it could be apt to an acquisition by a larger corporation. Before we start, I must once again repeat the sacred rules of this channel. You are allowed to disagree and express your disagreement with my opinions and that of others, but you will not disrespectful to or anyone else. Keep it easy going, it's just opinions at the end of the day. With that said, let's get started. Since the MCU became a thing, it has taken over as the main and leading franchise at the box office. Where once we had a healthy amount of diversity at theaters, it now appears that all the money that is made is brought about by the strong and growing fanbase of the MCU as such, a key argument was born, and it was that which states that Disney holds a monopoly at the box office, and that without their existence, movie theaters would cease to exist completely. After the many acquisitions of properties and franchises Disney has done over the past couple of decades, in conjunction with the failure of Warner Brothers to develop a strong and long-lasting DC universe that could rival and compete, there is little room to disagree with this take, or at least, it was for a time. Disney's box office strength has diminished over the recent couple of years after some fatigue saturated their franchises, but they are still bringing in the masses. Furthermore, Avatar The Way of Water is expected to break over $2 billion at the box office, once again showing that though they are surrounded in controversy, they are not short of projects that will bring the masses to theaters. Now, Disney's grip on movie theaters is incredibly strong, and will remain unrivaled for years to come, but new and unexpected rivals are quickly coming to understand the power play that is releasing movings on theaters. Amazon and Netflix both have huge and strong production companies that pump out high-quality movies every year. On October of 2022 last year, Netflix reached a historic deal with AMC and other minor theater chains that would allow them to show their big-budget movie Glass Onion, a knits-out mystery. This is an unprecedented move, and one that I strongly believe will not be the last to happen either. Making movies has become very expensive, and though streaming service giants reap billions of dollars in revenue, there is much opportunity to make more money for their bang by showcasing their biggest projects on the big screens. This fact, which for some odd reason became so oblivious for so long in due part thanks to the relentless attempts by the corporate media to bankrupt AMC, is now gaining momentum. Amazon was reported last November in 2022 to be planning on spending $1 billion per year on theatrical film releases. This is a huge change that could have unpredictable ramifications for the reasons I will now describe. First and foremost, as I said earlier, Disney has enjoyed being the undisputed king at the box office, and it will maintain itself as king for the short term, but now other movie giants will too be competing against them at the box office. Because there is competition, this could mean AMC would have the means to demand a higher cut per movie ticket, which will affect the bottom line of Disney. But even more so, these new developments make the existential premise of theaters become center front for all, theaters are here to stay. Maybe they will be a little different from how we have always experienced them to be, but both the need for movie studios to make money at the box office is apparent across more industries than we thought and the demand by customers to see movies at the big screen is still incredibly strong. This brings into question, if theaters are here to stay, where does AMC stand in this? Well, AMC is buried in nasty debt, it could most certainly use a more refined management team, though I will admit that is my opinion than a fact, it needs serious restructuring and more important than ever, it would do well to add value proposition to its customers by bolstering a stronger streaming service. I have argued time and again that them acquiring or making a movie production company that makes cheap but fun movies would allow it to not only make money from the box office, but also bolster their streaming service and most certainly, grow it over time. Just recently, the movie called Megan came out, 
It had a budget of just $12 million and in just two weeks' time, it earned five times its budget. Imagine if it was AMC raking in this money. Don't tell me that it doesn't make sense to develop a small production company to develop low-budget but high-quality films that can bring in consistent cash. But I am getting carried away, let's bring things back to the main topic. As I was saying, AMC is buried in debt but its potential to yield higher revenue and pay off its debt is still there, should circumstances ever align. With a market capitalization that has punished them for years and in my opinion, is due to continue affecting AMC negatively for the foreseeable future unless the company management does something about that, it actually could make them more desirable. Think about it, if you were Disney or Amazon, an acquisition to a company that would cost less than $10 billion but give them access to essentially a monopoly to theaters in the United States. If I were one of these big corporations, I would be waiting for a chance at a better price, but given that everyone is noticing that theaters are becoming an essential piece, it might put some pressure on the board members of Disney and Amazon to think about making an acquisition. Now, like I said, AMC is surrounded by financial issues that nobody yet has an answer to, and I also believe that moviegoing will not return to pre-pandemic levels, at least for the short foreseeable future. This is actually the biggest hindrance to an acquisition, and it makes the most sense. However, I think the answer to this actually comes from the fact that theaters could be so much more than what they already are. When we think of theaters, we think about big billboards on the front, we think about popcorn and red seats, a hot date and a great movie. AMC has been attempting to make this experience be more than this by adding bars, sporting events and even concerts to their theaters, but it's not enough. I think that the missing element to make theaters a much more robust experience actually lies in the ability for them to give various experiences to moviegoers. What if AMC theaters could be a sort of hybrid shop that had tons of collector figures for customers to buy? What if they sported cool cafes with a bit more robust eating menu? If you have been to a local GameStop in the recent years, you must have seen that they have tons of displays with figures and shirts and posters of the latest trending video games. What if AMC could have similar things? The movie-going experience would change vastly, because AMC could become the centerpiece to acquire a bunch of items that would yield in much greater revenue. I think Disney would be the one to win the most here. Given the large amount of franchises they have under their belt, I can see them turning AMC theaters into a location similar to that which they host in their parks. You know how after experiencing one of the biggest exhibits at a Disney park, before you walk out of the building, you have to go through these big giant stores that have candy and products related to the theme of the exhibit itself. A Disney-owned AMC could have similar things, which would greatly bolster their sales. I think the AMC movie-going theater experience is amazing, but I also feel it could be so much more than it already is. Amazon owns certain rights to parts of the Tolkien world, and they host a lot of Tom Clancy material. They could certainly make use of theaters to push these franchises to the more mainstream audience. Given that they are focused on growing the catalog of movies they make, I don't doubt that acquiring the greatest movie theater chain in the United States hasn't been discussed, especially when they already committed to spend at least $1 billion per year. Hollywood wants you to go back to theaters, that is very clear and apparent. However, even though millions have returned to the big screens, there is a considerable amount of people that have put off the experience for the sake of the couch convenience. This means that Hollywood and AMC need to rethink their strategy and redefine what a movie-going experience should be. Why should we just settle for a seat and popcorn when going to a movie should be celebrated as a fun event that hosts a multitude of fun little experiences? Like I said, it is through the potential of offering products, perhaps offering huge events with people in cosplays and live format events at the entrances amidst that like Disney hosts on their parks that the theater experience could become much more. AMC's current market cap is slightly under $3 billion, mostly due to the recent run by Bed Bath & Beyond. Once Adam Aaron Reverse splits AMC, I expect further price depreciation, which will make it even more appealing. I think Amazon and Disney are the strongest contenders. I know Disney is not very popular right now, have a ton of debt still to pay off, but as a company, they will be fine long term. Amazon on the other hand is quickly looking to grow their prime, and given their positive outlook towards theaters, it makes sense from a strategic standpoint to acquire them. And don't forget, Acquiring AMC would take out the middleman, which means even higher profit margins for Disney in particular, who seems to be the one putting out the most movies per year than any other company. An acquisition would be costly and an adaptation and refinement of theaters to suit the changes I mentioned would definitely cost a pretty penny, 
which is why I think these companies would wait for more stock depreciation and for AMC to eliminate as much of its debt as possible so that it is not passed on to them. However, long term, this could greatly help expand their empires. AMC could be so much more than it already is, and the media has done a great job at squandering any of these conversations. Things are changing though, and it is becoming a more pressing fact that the need for moviegoers to attend theaters is needed to help pay the heavy costs. I know I mentioned Disney and Amazon a lot, but Universal Studios is also a big contender with large IPs. There is much more competition than you might think, and though AMC is not looking to bright right now, they are fundamentally set in one of the strongest dominant positions. They could revert things back on their own with a more ambitious leadership team, but even without that, it also plays into the value proposition of industry giants that with the proper ambitions and creativity, could grow their revenue streams significantly bigger. I just wanted to express this opinion with you guys, let me know what you think on the comments below. Join my Discord already, especially if you are a day trader. I see so many people day in and out losing money making dumb trades. I'm not even asking you to join and trade with us, I'm asking you to come see for yourself our great winning ratios so that you can make an informed decision for yourself. Tag me in a message on Discord to speak to me and I will be more than happy to talk in private with you on a private channel and help you out. That aside, I will see you later in the week for another market video. Until then, I wish you a great rest of your day and to the moon.